In this video, we will explore the interrelated aspects of natural mortality and sustainable harvesting. There are two objectives to this video. First, we will introduce the concept of sustainable harvesting as it applies to northern wildlife populations. And secondly, we will highlight and identify the main factors that may affect levels of sustainable harvesting. And in particular, we will consider how natural and other human-caused wildlife mortality may affect sustainable harvesting levels. Wildlife co-management in Yukon is achieved through collaborative efforts of many parties, including the Yukon Government, the Yukon Fish and Wildlife Management Board, and local renewable resource councils, which are established in the traditional territory of each First Nation through land claims final agreements. The challenges facing these management partners are many. We summarize them here as they relate to consumptive use by people, as well as broader issues of conservation, land use, and climate change. Harvesting by Northerners is often grouped by the people using the resource. For example, First Nation, resident, and non-resident harvesters all have an interest in wildlife management and access to the resource. Although by definition poaching is the illegal harvesting of wild animals, it is also an important consideration and challenge for wildlife managers. Endangered species conservation is an important issue as well as trapping. Land use issues related to timber harvesting, non-renewable resource extraction such as oil, gas and minerals, as well as growth of human settlements and increased access to the land are also important issues for managers because they may directly and indirectly affect wildlife populations. Climate change is also an important issue because its effects will be felt most strongly by northern peoples and northern landscapes. By definition, sustainable harvesting means that the wildlife population is resilient and able to withstand the number of animals taken out of the population by people and still persist and thrive on the landscape. Determining sustainable harvest levels requires an understanding of the need to balance mortality from hunting and trapping with natural mortality and to recognize that there is a trade-off. In order to develop sustainable harvesting practices, we need to consider that a wildlife population, be it caribou, moose, mountain sheep, or bears, is affected by the total amount of mortality imposed upon it. This means that there is a balance between the natural rates of mortality experienced by wild populations and the mortality caused by hunting or harvesting. Thus, there is a need to consider limits to harvesting from a wild population. For example, if for some reason a population is affected by high rates of natural mortality, then the amount of harvesting on that population may need to be small. Similarly, Populations that are able to sustain higher rates of harvesting will have lower rates of natural mortality. Individual animals within wildlife populations are subject to a variety of mortality risks. Some of the natural types of mortality are those due to predation, like the classic and ongoing struggle between moose and wolves. Parasites and disease represent another type of natural mortality risk to wildlife populations. Wild populations also experience mortality that is associated with the number or density of animals within the landscape. This density-dependent mortality is often driven by competition for scarce resources such as food. Another type of mortality is that associated with random events such as deep snow or icing events that can cause quick and sudden deaths in a population. The mortalities are considered density independent and are often tied to climatic events and expressed as severe limitation on access to food or water or some other examples include deaths due to drowning and avalanches. For many species natural mortality is highly variable it is not constant. The reasons for this are tied to natural events that occur randomly and often suddenly. Examples of these events include deep snow or icing events, storms, berry crop failures, droughts, disease outbreaks, and cycles in forage productivity. And if we were to graph natural mortality of a wild population over time, we would see that there would be a lot of variation in the number of animals that died from natural causes. Due to these random environmental drivers, which introduce a lot of variation to natural mortality from one year to the next, a precautionary approach should be taken, which would suggest that wildlife managers maintain harvest levels relatively low when they are working with ecological systems and populations 
that are highly variable. So let's quickly review the main causes for high natural variation in northern wildlife populations. Natural climatic variation can result in early or late storms, failed berry crops, and variable forage production. One can easily think about the implications of storms to calf or lamb survival, failed berry crops to bears, and variable forage production to ungulates like moose and sheep. Variation in snowpack and icing conditions are very important ecological drivers for northern ungulate populations because it directly affects food availability during the critical winter months when animals are expending more energy than they can get through eating their food. Variable abundance in predators can also impose low or high rates of mortality and there is a dynamic relationship at play between the abundance of predators and the abundance of their prey species. Similarly, Diseases and parasites may also affect mortality rates of wildlife populations and contribute to the overall variability in abundance and trend of wildlife. To fully appreciate human-caused mortalities of wildlife in northern ecosystems, we need to consider more than just mortalities associated with hunting and trapping. In areas where there are roads, wildlife vehicle collisions may be an important cause of mortality. Human-wildlife conflicts may also result in the removal and or destruction of animals. And although poaching is illegal, it can also account for a substantive source of mortality in some wildlife populations. Thank you for your interest. Please join me in the next video where we will explore harvest management issues in some more detail.